I am the property of February, air and water. I am champion for the weary. Far beyond a pimp named Bishop or a preacher named Dollar, I carry a lost generation on my shoulders fighting to be heard. Fully loaded clip with an artillery of words brought forth to heal the soul and I'm surgically soul searching to remove all of the infested tumors and just like Moses, a two-one study. Born of the Immaculate Conception, no other had anything to do with this equation. That's if you believe my mother. Although there was a time too when she had called me Satan. You see, my blood had been cooked from centuries of being written in the back of a horse book, bred on scraps of hog to work and run, not knowing the meaning of having fun because life was a living hell. No garden of eating, even still, becoming the strongest buck which made me the first traded on the auction block. George Spencer Allen, but I officially go by Spencer Allen, and I was born and raised in St. Louis, Missouri, Northside City. What's special about the Northside St. Louis is much better than Southside, Westside, Eastside. Eastside, you cross the river over into East St. Louis. That's Illinois, so we don't even live with that. But then you got the Northside, which is where I was born and raised. That's that's the urban, that's the urban uh, side of St. Louis. I, w I was the bus operator for six years, a couple of years too long. I found out that I actually had started losing my hearing. When I first started recognizing that I started losing my hearing, actually it wasn't me. It was my, my wife, my balance. She noticed it and I went through a period of denying. Uh, when I finally started to really realize that I was losing my hearing is when I decided to go and get checked out on, with my own doctor. And I had lost a significant amount of hearing. How did I feel when I first was told that I needed hearing aids. Ooh. I, that was a, it was at the time, it was several things. I took it in because I'd already knew my, my hearing was bad. Needing hearing aids shocked me, you know. It, but at this, and I laugh when I hear things, uh, you know, that kind of like set me aback. But it was like, okay, what I got to do now? If I need them, I need them. I want to hear. I know I want to hear. I'm tired of, you know, feeling like I'm becoming an annoyance to people, constantly asking people to repeat something. What you say? Uh, what, huh? or I didn't hear you, can you say that again, can you repeat? So I had a lot of mixed feelings going on. Uh, anger, I had some anger going on because I kind of knew within uh, why or how I started losing my hearing. Uh, kind of re resolution, you know, resolving. It didn't really hit me till later on, but the initial shock, I was like, you know, all over the place. Prior to me wearing hearing aids, what was my perception of people who wore hearing aids? Like something's wrong with them. You know, you grew up, when you saw, when you see people with hearing aids, 
some count internally when you t start to stereotyping someone you be like oh are they slow you know were they slow or they disabled ment or they mentally disabled or or in whatever your, your your thoughts are is not in a positive manner so you kind of you know feel sorry for them i want people to treat me as they did before i guess you could say this my vein is is i i that's why i chose the type of hearing aids that i have that you can't see them just looking from the naked eye i got the hearing aid that went in the ear that you know unless you up on my ear you can't see because i still wanted to be seen as as a normal person that no don't, don't take no exception you know oh you know all of a sudden they thinking i'm slow or you know is he mentally uh mentally disabled in some kind of way that we gonna have to treat him a certain way or disallow him certain things so you know i just try to i want to still be be viewed as as me i am nikki allen i am Spencer Allen's wife. What do I enjoy most about Spencer? That's a difficult question to answer because there are so many things that I enjoy about him. Um, I think I enjoy the love that I see in his eyes for me. It's just genuine. Um, I also enjoy his corny jokes. My and jokes are not corny. Corn. Straight off the cob. He's a good balance for me because I'm very high energy. Uh, I live in full color 100% of the time. And he's pretty monotone. So that's a good balance for me. What do I consider to be his greatest strength? I believe his greatest strength is his wealth of knowledge. Um, he has a tremendous wealth of knowledge. That was one of the um, most attractive things that I found about him when I first met him. Um, I thought, wow, he is, well, I was gonna crack a joke. He is fine and smart. The emotions that I feel when I see him performing is goosebumps. Uh, one of the things that he has always had the ability to do was to give me butterflies. Um, and he has been able to do that from our very first date. So when he is on stage performing, uh, certain poems still give me butterflies. When Spencer is performing and he is at the height of his performance, I believe that the audience is experiencing his raw ability to be one with himself on stage. He writes from a very pure place from a very honest, direct place. Um, and he's very open, powerful, and vulnerable when he's sharing. And so there's no way that you cannot feel that. I believe that because we're both artists, we <clears throat> know how to allow each other to have a space to create. Um, we share ideas with each other all the time. Um, we ask each other, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about doing this, what do you think? And we're very honest and extremely supportive with each other on our individual ideas. Um, it works really well. We understand that we need time in the lab. And that doesn't affect our marriage. 
or um, we don't feel as if, you know, oh, we're taking away from each other by being in the lab and creating. And then we're always there to support each other when it's time to perform, to display, to share. Um, and so we're a team. We've been a team since day one. Team Allen. Team. Team. A spoken word artist is a prophet, damn near God in the way he delivers or she can deliver their word and how their word can actually touch somebody, can actually motivate somebody, can actually change lives. That's, that's, that's powerful. That is powerful as a spoken word artist. To be able to change lives just by what you say. And it's more than a spoken word artist is more than the artist aspect. It's even knowing that power that you have. My next performance is actually tomorrow, May 1st. Uh, my performance is at uh, Pip's Restaurant uh, in Los Angeles, California on Pico and La Brea. <laughs> to be here as your host. Once again, my name is Inspire, and I have host venues, and I've done uh, shows, so I am a veteran in this as well around the LA scene, starting out in Lamert Park, and I'm so excited. Are you guys excited for a show? We have two hot features. Um, I just can't wait to call them up. So I would like to start off the show with a piece for you. This piece is called, entitled Better Days. Remember the day when a smooth groove could take you away? When your parents had parties sending all the kids out to play and if you was in grown folks business, then you were in the way. Yes, back in the day where things were simple, arguments trivial, and all those times were tough, we still had a love love, love, love to get through and discipline was good for you. There was no hanging in the streets. Your cousin and them was your crew and your elders told you what to do. There was no time for talking back. No, we were too busy being kids playing double dutch and Jackson. Even the air seemed healthier because there was no such thing as an asthma attack because if we had a race and you came in last and out of breath, you were just getting laughed at and too much teasing had your mama hollering, stop that. Yes, those are the days that I reminisce on and I can't believe that they're so long gone because I'm looking at today's generation wondering what went wrong and who was the Grinch that stole love out of songs because all these kids know now is to drop down and get your league alone. Must I ask again, what happened to love and respect? Smokey Robinson, the temptations back when disrespecting your woman was a sin. And it wasn't no not making up or being friends, but now it seems over the simplest thing your life can end. And I'm just wishing for days when families work things out because what happened under our roof stayed in our house. Now you got kids calling, cussing their parents out, calling the cops, wondering why they're catching felonies at 10. We got videos teaching our little girls how to be pros and whack rappers teaching our boys how to be men. Keep going at this rate and we allow the system to win, but oh no, I can't let go. Someone has to teach the little girls they're more than pros slowing down poles for a dollar. They could be a top-notch scholar just holla and teach our boys that real men pull out chairs and open doors and they don't disrespect women by degrading them on dance floor and you can tell a real man by the way he treats his mama and he doesn't abandon ship he knows that it's better to walk away from a fool than to stay and trip see i'm just searching for better days where kids weren't so eager to dig their own graves i mean why can't we go back to the ways in which we were raised when things got tough we just hit our knees and prayed for better days thank you that's that piece that's just, I'm just warming up the show for you guys. I'm Through all the turmoil and harsh words spoken in rage, channeling aggression with the wrong weapons the wrong way, mortal combat with my own blood, civil war among siblings. Shut the fuck up. You know you can't whip me. You want to talk all loud in front of company? You trying to front me? I'm going to make you shut the fuck up. 
by using my brawn. Cause you just keep going on and on and on. You don't tell me what the fuck to do. You need to blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna go get so-and-so and he gonna blah, blah, blah. What? The last nerve has been struck. Now I told you to shut the fuck up. Now y'all know y'all all y'all got. Officer, officer, pull out your gat and make them stand next to each other and hug. Blood is blood. Sibling rivalry can get fiery. Can't nobody hurt me like you. Through all the turmoil and harsh words spoken in rage, I love you. You my sister. You gonna always be, even if you don't never shut the fuck up. Gosh, what, what can I say about this, this next feature we're about to have? He comes from St. Louis, but he's made his home here. See, it's a journey. He's journeyed his words. He's brought his words all the way here. And, uh, you know, he is, uh, he's known as the Spin Doctor. His name is Spencer Allen. He's known as the Spin Doctor. And for the, that reason, he's known because he mixed metaphors, analogies, and assimilies to tell a poetic story. He's been a main stage on the LA poetry scene for years, producing, hosting weekly open mics and feature showcases. The Spin Doctor was one of the first to incorporate poetry and live music together on a regular basis. He also has one of the first here in LA to advocate for, po advocate to, for poets to be paid for our services, for our art, yes. He has published three books and two CDs with poetry and music. Today, Spencer is a certified life coach, okay? And he uses poetry with his assisting individuals and couples, even companies, in knowing how to see through the storm to gain empowerment of self. Are you guys ready for him to speak in tongues to you? Let's give it up for Spencer Allen Spindock with his poetry speaking in tongues. What a life we lead. Moving every day like the hour hand on the clock. We tick tock in unison and I try not writing this, but you need me to breathe just as I need you to live. Through you, I see a perfect reflection of myself every time I catch that gleam in your eyes from the very moment of sunrise and you levitate every time I grip your waist. What a life indeed because nothing has come easy yet we have managed to maneuver through the pains choosing never to relish on the disdain we both be born outside of the universe but still at times wishing to fit inside that proverbial box and blend in with the fray. But just as the moon crosses into the sun. That box becomes too minuscule for the magnitude of our aura must be allowed to shine and although our first encounter was captured in red, our story is being told through hues of the rainbow. I saw you and pursued you with the power of my thoughts. You responded by stalking me through your looking glass together. Let's untie the knots that has you in bondage so that Together, let's untie the knots that has you in bondage so that we can rejoice in the triumph of the struggle that we have come through. I seek new meaning because unconditionally, I love you, I love you, I love you 300 times daily. Talk to me like you have never done with any other before and I will put a new song in you to sing out into the world. Love me like the ocean, deep only knowing that it never ends. Handle me with your gentleness and I will savor you like the taste of cotton candy. Baby, I'm handy when it comes to taking your dreams from the impossible. You were manifested through fireworks, bursting into star-spangled banners, hovering, lingering within my solstice. You anointed me, Mr. T. So take hold of this perfect temptation that was created specifically for you and let's let life open wide for us. What a life it would be, you standing palm in palm with me. What a life. I really tried not writing this, but I love you. I love you. I love you. 300 times daily like breaking news because we be building off of hearts that pump blue. We be black 
like diamonds, sacred, don't want secrets, do not want to be a secret. Let's be known, world renowned with this life, with this life, what I promise you, what I pledge to you. Believe in me and I will live you. Believe in me, trust in me. Let our life interlock as one connected to God and the universe spinning continuously on its axis and we shall dance in the essence of each other for forever. Tango, cha-cha, two-step with me. What a life. Let's work it out. Let's push that fear out. Let faith continue to guide you as you walk right. Right into what you have asked, dreamt, prayed, cried for. Awake from your sleep into the reality of your dreams and flourish in the unconditional with me. Thank y'all. Yeah. Give, give it up one more time for Spin Doctor. Please give it up one more time for our feature, Speaking in Tongues. Oh, wow. Listen, Woo. was that hot or what? Yeah. Okay, it was like I was, I was being a boyer. How was the show and what did you get out of it? The show was excellent as expected. Anytime you have Spencer Allen and Yahweh Watts and Inspire involved, it's going to be amazing. I love the fact that there was so much vulnerability on stage. It talks about winning over a loving wife and being a, being a father and just by LA traffic just it was anything and everything yeah. summarized life made you feel good <laughs>